Here are some common fixes for TikTok Live Studio problems in 2024. Starting with not even having access. The requirements vary and 1000 followers doesn't always get you access, but don't worry, there's two easy fixes for this. Firstly, you can find a free to join TikTok Live agency. As it says on my website, they can give you access to Live Studio as well as protection from false bans, training to get more gifts and a stream key if you want that too. I'll put my list of agencies that can get you access to Live Studio in the description. Secondly, you can try this application. I call this the Falcon application. You just fill out a bit of information. I've put this in the description and some people have reported after filling it out, they've got Live Studio access. Let's talk about lag now and there's a few things that can cause that. So start on Google, just type in speed test and either go on speedtest.net or just run Google's own speed tester. The download speed isn't so important. What you need to have the best quality settings is at least 10 megabits per second of upload speed. I'll show you a fix shortly if you don't have 10. But before that, let's look at the recommended settings for your computing power. So inside Live Studio, I'm going to click on the question mark at the top and then click into the help center. Then I'm going to click on getting started and then the TikTok Live Studio operation manual. Then I have to scroll through all of this information. And as you can see, we've now landed on the system requirements. So I think a lot of you will be streaming the games listed in the bottom left, like League of Legends and Fortnite. For that, it's recommending an RTX 2060 or 2070 graphics card as a minimum, an i7-8700 processor, and at least 16 gig of RAM as the standard specs. If you have a laptop or if your PC is less powerful than this, then you might encounter issues. But we'll look at some basic fixes and suggestions in a second. And I don't really know what the elite specs mean, but for that, it's suggesting a 2080 and a 999900. That's a lot of nines and 32 gig of RAM. As we said earlier, it's also recommending over 7.5 meg of upload. I actually recommend over 10 meg. All right, so let's look at the best settings for Live Studio, and we'll also look at settings for if you're experiencing lag and you want to dial them down a bit. And it is relatively simple. Just click onto the settings cog, and it is stream quality. It usually opens by default. And for a high quality live stream, streaming games like Fortnite that we mentioned earlier, you want between 6,000 and 9,000 bitrate. So I'll choose the 8,000 bitrate. If you get a warning message like me, I'm just going to ignore it because I know my PC specs can handle it. As you saw earlier, I did the internet speed test and my internet upload speed is fine. I recommend the H.265 hardware encoder. Make sure it's a hardware encoder and not a software encoder. The hardware encoder is going to use your graphics card to encode the live stream. Of course, 60 FPS, 256 audio bitrate, and the resolution 1920 by 1080 means it's in 1080p. You don't need these bottom two settings. So if you want the best quality settings, now you can just close out. And if I click back in, you can see they are now set. Now, some people's PC or internet can't handle the top quality settings. So underneath video quality, I'm gonna click the drop down list and I suggest you just choose the 720p preset. This is going to lower your stream to 720p. As we said, it's going to lower you to 30 FPS, a 2800 bitrate, and an audio bitrate of 128. You could even theoretically go down to 2000 bitrate if your internet upload speed is struggling. And stay once again on a hardware encoder, preferably H.265 if you have it. As I said earlier, I only recommend 720p if you're finding that you are lagging while live streaming, either because of low upload speed or because of poor computer performance. Right, next up, I get questions every single day about audio problems on Live Studio. So let's look at those. So let's click into the audio settings. You can see to the right of the settings cog, that's this symbol here. This is the audio settings. And firstly, what I'm going to recommend you do is make sure there's only one microphone and audio added. So you can see I've got two. I'm just going to click on one of them and press the delete audio button. Now let's start by making the relevant changes. So against my microphone, I'll click the settings cog and to the right of microphone device, make sure you have selected the correct microphone. For me, that is my quadcast. I suggest you don't choose default device because Windows sometimes randomly changes your default, or at least it does for me. So don't choose default. I'll choose my quadcast and I'm going to recommend noise suppression. You can leave it on 50% or up to 100% if there's a lot of background noise in your room like fans or AC. You typically don't need any of these other options. If you do find you have some strange audio offset, you can check that box, but most people don't need it. And let's save. 
and we'll repeat this step with our speakers. So press the settings symbol and to the right of audio sources. Again, don't use the default option. Most of you are probably wearing a headset. So that is the speakers you want to select. This will obviously enable the viewers to hear the same thing as you. So I'll choose my Cloud2 wireless headset. You don't need to check any of the other options and you'll just press save on that again. And for most standard setups, that's all you need, just your microphone with noise suppression and your headset. If you have a capture card, I've found sometimes you have to add a second source, which is your capture card as a microphone. So that's typically for console streamers. For example, if you have an Elgato capture card, find it in the microphone list and add it as a mic. And that's really all the audio settings. You can click out of it. Don't forget at the bottom, you can click both these symbols to mute and unmute. So make sure you haven't accidentally clicked one of these buttons at the bottom. And if I click into the normal settings underneath hotkeys, make sure you haven't accidentally set a hotkey where you're muting or unmuting yourself accidentally. Next up, you might be getting warnings from Live Studio saying that the power or upload speed on your PC is not good enough. If you know it's good enough and look back at the requirements at the start of the video, if you know it's good enough, then just ignore the warnings. So I got sent this screenshot where it says he's only got two meg of upload, but he knew that he had more. So I just told him to simply ignore it and set his bitrate to 8000 as we did earlier. Unfortunately, Live Studio is just very buggy. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the streaming world, then you can subscribe to my free newsletter called Live Success. It's in the description every single week. I send advice to monetize and grow your live streams, including the latest streaming news and studies of the most successful live streamers. Once again, that's in the description. Next up, let's look at how to improve your camera quality. So when you add your camera to Live Studio, it often adds it sometimes in 480p, sometimes in 720p. So what you wanna do next to your camera, just right click it and go into settings. And if you want your camera on the highest res possible underneath resolution, just click on the drop down list and set it at least to 1920 by 1080. If you do have a high end 4K camera, then set it to that instead. If you have 60 FPS, set your camera to 60 FPS as well. Of course, if you are lagging, don't do this and maybe even consider turning it down to 480p. But if you want the highest quality live studio stream, set your camera to 1080p and the highest available FPS. Most of these other settings, they're all just fine. So press apply. And now my camera is in 1080p. Now here is a relatively simple one, but don't forget you can check the settings of every single source, not just your camera settings. So for example, people often tell me that their cursor has disappeared. So let me add in a display capture, then I'll show you the problem. So if I press add on the display capture, make sure you've checked capture cursor. It's as simple as that for an issue like that. A few people have reported that to me. And again, if you've already got your display capture added, just right click the display capture, click on settings and check the capture cursor box and press apply. Next up, here's a pretty straightforward one. Just make sure your graphics card is updated because Live Studio is using your graphics card to encode the live stream. So if you have an Nvidia graphics card, use GeForce Experience. By coincidence, there's a new update for me to install today. And I don't have an AMD graphics card, but I'm sure AMD also have the relevant software that will easily let you download the latest update. All right, next up, here's one for people with the lower end PCs and the laptop. This is gonna save a few resources while you're live. And it's really simple. You just press this button up here, which hides the preview of your live stream. That just saves some computer resources. But as TikTok's put, your viewers can still watch the live. It just means you can't see what the viewers are currently seeing. Once again, that's only really for low end PCs. You can always just press turn on to see it again. If you have a mid range PC, then you don't need that. And sometimes OBS is just better. So for example, if you're struggling with capture card issues, then add your capture card as a source inside OBS instead. Or if you want another OBS feature that Live Studio simply doesn't have, like Atom Vertical, for example, set up your stream inside OBS, then click Start Virtual Camera, then head back into Live Studio, add source, find the camera option, and then find the OBS virtual camera option, press add, and I'm adding the same image here, but you can see this one is now showing everything on OBS. Word of caution here, the OBS virtual camera only copies over video. If you need to add audio, go back into the microphone and audio settings. And speaking of the virtual cam, I'll put my longer virtual cam guide on screen now. And if you're sick of Live Studio and you just want to use OBS on its own, you need a stream key, but you can get those from free to join agencies 
and you can watch my Stream Keep video to learn more.